Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss further into the substitution rule and now look at uh, definite integrals and go over some examples using this. But before I get to it, I just want to quickly recap on a substitution rule for definite integrals. Basically, if u equals g of x, a differentiable function whose range is an interval i, and f is continuous on i, meaning if you plug in u inside f right here, that the range of u, basically, f, uh, it's continuous on this, it becomes the domain of f. And g prime, or the derivative of g, is continuous on interval a to b. And basically, and if you have an integral like this, integral of from a to b of f of g of x times g prime of x dx, then you could just write equals, well, f of u du, replace u equals g of x. And the differential is going to be du equals g prime of x dx, replace with that. And you also plug in this a inside of u equals g of a right here. So you put it here, and also for the g of b right here. You can see proof of this in my, and some other uh, videos on it in my in the video links below in the description. Basically, I'm going to go over these two examples. I'll go over example one first, which states find a definite integral from 1 to 2 of, well, dx divided by, yeah, so I'll just remove this dx, I only need 1. So basically, dx divided by 3 minus 5x, uh, and then all squared right here. So that's the first one, let's write it down here. Yes, yeah, so if I write the integral right here, basically now uh, what we could do is use the substitution rule and just try to simplify this out. And as you can see, the, the simplest we could do is, is let basically u equals to, the most complicated part is this, this inside the bracket here, which is three minus five x right here. So now if we take the derivative, we're gonna get du is equal to basically, well, negative five, and we always have to include the dx, so this is a differential right here. But then we gotta write, basically, the remainder part is here, dx, so write this in terms of dx, so dx is equal to, we'll divide this out, so uh, basically du divided by negative five right here. So now we could, uh, well, we can plug this in, but first let's write what is at, basically, at x equals to one, we have u of one, that's equal to, because we gotta replace these as well. Yeah, and this part right here, u of one, we plug that into this one right here, which is three minus five uh, times one. And this is equals to negative two. So now at the end point of this one, two, so at x equals to two right here, we get basically u of two equals to, well, three minus five times two. So this three minus 10, this equals to basically negative seven. So yeah, three minus 10 is just negative seven. So we have these ones. So now we're ready to substitute everything inside here. So we get basically integral from negative two to negative seven of the dx becomes uh, one over uh, negative five. So we can even put that, yeah, just right here, negative one over five right here, multiplied by now, this is the, we replace it with the u. So it's gonna be, well, one over u squared and there's always a dx, uh, I mean du at the end. Yeah, du right over here. So now if we take the integral of this, we just need to find antiderivative of u squared, and we can take this constant out of the function, so we'll get one over five, negative one over five. So now this is gonna be one over u and then negative, because the derivative of this one will be well, basically negative one over, and then we have to uh, add a power, I mean subtract a power, so it's gonna be negative two. So this is the antiderivative of one over u squared. So we also put a negative there. And so then this is gonna be basically from negative two to negative seven. But as you can see, this is a negative, that's a negative. They will basically cancel out. So you're left with, uh, actually I'll just simplify it further. So it's gonna be one over five. Yeah, so one over five here times it by just canceling out basic uh, negative. Yeah, so we put one over u right here and then it obviously from negative two to negative seven. So now we can just plug these inside, so we'll get one over five times it by, uh, it's gonna be now negative, um, basically negative one divided by seven, because this is negative seven, and then we've subtracted by, so then uh, one over negative two, or it's gonna be just put a plus two right here, because it's negative and negative becomes positive. So we have this part right here, now we could use common denominator, multiply, uh, both sides, on this side, the top and bottom by seven, and this one by two, so we get a 14 common denominator. So this will just be one over five, negative two over 14, plus seven over 14. 
Yeah, so we basically uh, add these off. This is going to be negative 2 plus 7. That is negative. That's, just, that's positive 5. So we'll get 5 over 14. And obviously, there's a divided by 5 over there. So just multiply by 5 at the bottom. So we get this part here, and the 5s cancel. So we'll be left with 1 over 14. There's our answer. Yeah, so now let's look at example two, which is the integral from one to the number e of ln x divided by x and then dx right here. Yeah, so we have this one over here, I just wrote it down here. Basically, if we're trying to solve the integral of this, it's, it's not straightforward enough, but then when you look at just trying to replace a complicated part with a substitution, let's say let, in this case, I'm gonna let u equals to ln of x. And the main reason is because when you take the derivative of this ln x, we'll have a 1 over x uh, inside that uh, the part here, and we can basically replace it. So what I mean by that is if we take the derivative of this, we get du is equal to, well, 1 over x dx. And now this equals to the remaining part of the function, so we have this part already. So that we can replace it, but before we get to that, we obviously have to switch the uh, variables right here. This is x equals 1 is x equals e. So basically at x equals to 1, we have u of 1, is equal to well ln of one and this basically equals to zero right here so you can see more on uh, natural logs and logarithmic function in the video links below as well as the proof for the derivative of ln of x right here and y is equal to one over x you see that all in the video descriptions below in the related videos so we have that part now at x equals to e we get basically u of e and this equals to ln of e and this is basically log base e of e, so this equals to 1 right there, but based on our log properties. So we have this part, so now we're ready to substitute everything inside. So we get integral from, yeah, from 0 to 1 of now, basically ln x has become u, and 1 over x dx has become du, so du. So as you can see how simple, simple it is now that we've used substitution. So we could basically solve this now, and the antiderivative u is just basically u squared divided by two, and because if you take the root of this, it becomes two, and then uh, two u cancel, and the two cancels right there, and we'll just get u. Uh, basically, so now we have this from zero to one. So now we just plug this in, so we'll get basically one over two. I'll take the one over two out. So we're just gonna have a one squared, which is one minus zero squared, which is zero and we're just left with one over two right here. And that's our final answer. So anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned from these two examples, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the video links below, I mean in the link below, and I'll also watch other related videos in the video links below. Anyways, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.